So my name is Pranav Vora, and I've lived in DC now for 10 years, a proud resident. Um, and I love this topic, this intersection of entrepreneurship, creativity, innovation, the creative economy. Um, what I'm going to talk about, the epiphany of the consumer, and what is it? So quick definition, it's that moment when you no longer accept what you have in the past to be true. So as a consumer, um, be it an aha moment or a precipitating series of events, whatever it may be, you have an unmet need now and you need to find a solution and a product, service, experience, whatever it may be. And a picture. So I'm guessing most of you know who this is. Uh, Jared Fogle, um, often known as a subway right guy. Right way to say that. Sorry. <laughs> um, so Jared um, of Subway, he, ha he recognized a problem that he had himself. So here's what it is. Um, he had an unhealthy lifestyle. He was um, inactive. He was eating a lot of junk food. And he decided he needed to make a change. Um, so what he did was started to eat um, Subway every day. He started to walk more. He lost a bunch of weight. He improved his lifestyle. He improved his health for the better. Now, Jared's story, the reason I mention this, it's, it's, it's popular. Everyone knows it. Um, but not all changes in consumer choice need to be um, fueled by uh, life-altering events. They can be simple things. They can be the bottle of water that you chose to drink today, um, where you decide to get your next pair of running shoes. Um, simple things, but it's basically going against what you know to be true and changing um, for one shape uh, for the better or worse. So what I'm fascinated by is when we decide to buy, what we buy, and from whom we buy. Um, something that's going to help kind of frame this uh, talk a little bit is this notion of evolving uh, economies. So. Um, Joseph Pine gives us this framework, and he thinks about it in these four ways. So the agrarian economy was that economy where it was all focused on food, largely, commoditized items. Um, so undifferentiation, these are things that you need fundamentally at the biological level. Um, and it was not about consumer uh, wants, it was about needs. Um, we moved into the industrial age. So this is now the, the rise of manufacturing. This is the finished good. This is taking a bunch of raw materials and making a product from it. And this enabled us to do things that we couldn't before. And we started as individuals having desires and wants beyond just biological needs. We moved into a service economy. Um, this is when we're taking customized solutions, activities. Um, a good itself wasn't enough. Um, the financial services, the advent of that is a perfect example for that. We moved on to the experience economy that we're in now. And so this is really interesting. This is about um, the experience, much like TEDx Washington, D.C. Um, this is about the authenticity of things. Is it real? What, what is it that we're experiencing? Um, do I believe in it? But what about the consumer uh, sentiment, consumer perceptions? How has that kind of changed over time? Well, what I'd like to do is talk about, if I may, a couple of emerging ideas on these sorts of consumer epiphanies. Um, and squarely kind of talk about how there was a consumer of the past and there's a consumer of now. So, consumer of the past. Uh, low price. Um, you cared about that dollar burger. You could probably still get it for a dollar now. Um, and that was important to you. Consumer of now cares more about value. So now this is not about necessarily trading um, price for product attributes, but this is more about all right, I actually care about where the ingredients are coming from. I care about um, knowing that the price of a burger might be a dollar, but what's the overall cost to the economy, to myself, my health, et cetera. You start thinking about the ingredients. You start thinking about the supply chain. Another example of the consumer of the past is more. Um, so you, know, you have this, and I'm not even sure, is this I think the ab roller? I can't remember the name of this particular device, but it's, it's the notion of more. And, you realize that this device alone isn't enough because maybe you want to work your entire abs, not just like one or something like that. And so you get another, and you roll it out or whatever with this guy, and this doesn't do it, so you get one more. And um, you just need more. There's more, more ab devices. And here's another, and then there's another. And not to judge or anything, um, but if you're that person that has these things, you, it starts to starts to uh, make you wonder, what is it that you're trying to do? What's the end state? Um, is it accumulation of things more and more? 
or is it actually to change your life for the better? And so maybe you just simplify. Maybe all you need is a pair of running shoes. Another example of this is bigger. So I'm a household of two and a cat, and I need a home with six rooms and a bonus room. I need the McMansion, um, or I need this car. <laughs> I don't know who needs this car, but um, <laughs> if you're that one individual that likes driving around in this car, you need it. You need all that room, right? And I think that's the consumer of the past. Um, the consumer of now thinks about what's right for me, what's my size, um, and you see this squarely in the automobile industry, um, you see the rise of the smaller car, the Fiat 500 in this example. Uh, one more to share, this one more way of how the consumer of the past is different from the consumer now and how epiphanies are changing this. Ubiquity. So in the past, you bought things largely based on ubiquity. Is it, is it near you? Is it available? Is it convenient? Can I drive my Escalade there and get it? Um, the consumer of now thinks a little bit differently, I think, and it's more about authenticity. Um, you know, it, it might be the mom and pop shop, but you're asking questions about, you know, who's behind the business that I'm supporting, that I'm buying, you know, even the the day-to-day -day goods that I need. So, um, where is this all kind of going? Um, I want to give you an explanation of where I think how the I think the economy got to where it is, and um, with a little personal story. So. Um, greetings from South Bend, Indiana. That's where I grew up. I grew up in South Bend, Indiana, um, and my mother there worked in a department store for a number of years called Ella Sears. So she would use her employee discount and make sure that she bought Polo, Dockers, even Z Cavaricis, if you know that one. I'm not going to show pictures of these, obviously, but these were, these were the, uh, the goods that were popular at the time, but she wanted to make sure that my brother and I and my father dressed well. Um, now, I, I loved that clothing. Um, I really did growing up. And, and it wasn't until um, I studied abroad in London until I kind of had that epiphany of my own. And that was that um, maybe I could use better fitting clothing. I mean, these were, these were just ill-fitting garments. They were nice, I mean, and, and they had the horse on them and everything, but they, they just didn't, they didn't fit. So I kind of, um, I had that realization that maybe these carpenter jeans weren't right for me. Um, and so it was London that took this, um, took this uh, for me to kind of see this epiphany that I had myself about fit, about that rational moment um, of understanding how a garment should fit you. Um, and what I did is came back um, and started a company uh, a couple years later, actually. Now, this is something that I couldn't have done years ago um, in the way that Jared um, felt the need to change his life for the better. And he found Subway, and that met his need. At that time, it was hard to do. Uh, we're in a different economy right now. We have the internet, clearly, um, and the um, advent in hardware and software technologies, but social, mobile, there's so much going on right now, and it's never been a better time to start a business. Um, cheaper, quicker, faster. Um, what I did was came back and started Hue and Cry. So Hue and Cry is an online retailer of menswear. We're in Georgetown. We do most of our stuff online. I welcome you to come by your shop anytime. Um, what we do is fit lean and athletically built men with a better garment size based on your body shape. So it's a very simple business. It's uh, a consumer need. It's a product that meets that need. All right, so at this point, it's probably fair to ask kind of where I'm going with this. Um, and I want to kind of share a quote that I think will be helpful. So Steve Jobs said, life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made by people who were no smarter than you. And my dear mother will be the first to say that um, in the family of you know, I have one older brother, I wasn't necessarily the one that was past the intelligence in the family. I'm not the, the sharpest tool in the shed. But what I did was I started a company that met my um, need, the void in the market. Um, where I'm going with this is that I think the epiphany of the consumer is the, actually the epiphany of the entrepreneur. And so you're all consumers. And if there's any ask that I have of you, it's to go out and ask yourself, is that product service experience that you're engaging in, is that right for you? Or should, you be, or should there be an alternative? Should there be something different, better? And if there is, you don't need anyone to tell you that you're an entrepreneur. You already are. And if you're so lucky to be inspired by an idea, you owe it to yourself to do something about it. Thank you.